What we have here sitting behind me is a 1993 DPS coupe. So DPS means Department of Public Safety here in Texas, also known as what would be an SSP car that hasn't been on the road since 2010. Crank underdrive itself actually snapped some of the bolts and the pulley came right off. In case you had a little bit of extra time, you could easily figure out how to bypass all that. Well, we know why this pump wasn't working. Was, uh, just about to shut the hood and I'm like oh let me make sure that these clutch fan bolts will break loose you know if otherwise I'll spray some of my you know penetrating fluid on there and they all came out so that's out the shroud is out sitting right there still got coolant in the overflow which is all a good sign so now I am going to get the puller set up well, we'll get the bolt out hopefully the bolt comes out and if it does then we'll get the puller lined up and maybe pull the balancer off. 15 sixteenths. Well, that was easy. Take that back. There's another one to thread in. Uh, okay, maybe not. Well, I'm kind of glad that I decided to deep dive into that this evening because now I've come to realize that three out of the four bolts are sheared off in the balancer and the balancer bolt came out with these which is great um, unfortunately I just can't get the pulley the pulling tool on now um, unless maybe like if I had like a steering wheel style puller like went around the balancer that might be uh that might be the way to go anyways guys leave it with me obviously this will uh be resuming tomorrow or whenever we get back to it but we definitely need to get that guy off too bad too because the rubber actually doesn't look like it's all in that bad of shape on there it's windy it's midday I just went to TSC to hopefully have a bag of tricks here to maybe come up with a solution to get this balancer off. So I'm hoping that I can actually get bolts that go through the holes and get nuts on the backside and uh, be able to get this puller on. At least fingers crossed I'll be able to do that. So I'm going to try it right now. I got a couple different lengths to show you guys as we go along here. Hopefully we can get this guy off. So if I can do this, and I'll show you, if this works, I'll show you guys exactly. Oh shit, I dropped the washer. Yeah, so as long as I can get this off guys, I'll show you exactly how I do it. Definitely a little bit of reaching around here, but I think with a little bit of luck, this might work.
Easy peasy. See what I did here? That was just kind of for safety because I was the only bolt or thread threaded hole that I had left. See where everything else sheared off. So I managed to drive. These are um, five sixteenths bolts, three and a half inches long. Washer in the backside with the nut on the backside, and you know what? It worked out just fine. So. I think we're in good shape. I'll be uh, swapping the balancer out and we'll get a crank pulley on and that'll put an end to this problem right here. So we'll do that later this afternoon. Actually screw it. Maybe I'll put it on right now just to uh, make things easier. And that'll be one last thing to worry about. We'll just need to get the belt. Bolt the crank pulley on. Dab of RTV on the QA hole. Already got the pulley installed, so that way I could, you know, torque it down to where it needed to be. Put the RTV on the threads for the main bolt. There we go. So there we have it guys, dirty job, but somebody's got to do it. We got it done. And once the belt and everything else is back on, we can make sure we torque that main crank slash balancer bolt down to the appropriate torque. I want to say it's somewhere around 135 foot pounds. I could be wrong with that, but anyways, it's, it's quite a bit more than you know you want to put your little milwaukee through although that does drive things on pretty tight and it breaks things loose and that is one very interesting thing you know whoever put the underdrives on clearly didn't torque those little allen bolts down all the way and guys it is a pain in the car if you don't have the right sockets like the long allen head sockets you really can't get proper torque on there so that's why i actually installed it on the balancer inside the shop to make sure that was all torqued down because ultimately they came loose they started wobbling resulting in snapping three out of four of the bolts and the reality was the bolt for the balancer came out so easily and who's to say anything was really torqued down at all kind of reminds me of an 04 srt 10 viper truck where the balancers fall off and it was actually a factory known problem they forgot or just didn't torque those balancers down enough uh, when they came off the line and it actually happened to my truck. Thankfully, no significant damage was done. I managed to put an ATI balancer on, but that's going to conclude that guys. The tank, fuel pump, sending unit, pickup, all that stuff should be showing up here. Actually, it's already down at the gate. I can see it right now. So we'll be able to do that a little later. going to wait until the, uh, the sun starts going over the shop. I got some other stuff to do at the commercial shop. So we'll be back at this little DPS coop here shortly and hopefully this thing's gonna fire up and purr like a kitten. All right guys, it's later in the afternoon now. Got that crank pulley back on and balancer swapped over and I've got my LMR parts here, new gas tank and there should be pickup, pump, sending unit, some grommets, everything else. So we're gonna go ahead now, prepare the tank, get it ready, slam it back underneath the car and we'll swap out the starter solenoid and maybe actually swap out the clutch cable since the car is already halfway jacked up. Then hopefully, you know, if everything goes the way that I'm hoping it will, probably be able to take it for a little joyride. So let's see. Sir. Overnight parts from LMR guys. So you uh, definitely don't get anything when you order the tank bare bones so you want to make sure you get all your other supporting parts
Don't lose the fuel clip. Alright guys, so nothing too fancy here in reality, but everything is pre-assembled, ready to go. You don't have to deal with putting the pump in and deal with any wiring or anything like that. So we can pretty much just push on our sock. Like that. And um simply give you two different seals, but do the trick. You see some rust in there, right? Nice and clean. That tank is in. All we gotta do now is put fuel in it. But when you guys do your fuel tank and pump, just make sure that these lines are tucked out of the way, aren't touching your exhaust, or maybe out even more, potentially up against your tire. Make sure your plastic cover here isn't on your exhaust. You can see where it melted a little bit there before. So, Everything looks good here. I think we're in a position to now crawl under this car. I'm gonna assess the clutch cable situation. I got another adjustable one here, as I do know that there's an aluminum quadrant inside the car. So let's have a peek. Almost looks like a center force clutch in there. You know, orange, so. Take any play out of the cable. Probably just old and stretched. So I'm gonna leave the cover off just in case and put that back on when we change the oil. We'll do that once we validate that the car runs. Fuel going through there. That Miller light's not empty enough to. I could chug it, but not in the chugged mood until we're in victory. All right. So that'll do that. Let's pour some fuel into this thing. This belt's on, fuel's in. Miller light over there. Let us hook up the battery terminals. Let's go here. Let's see here. Oh, I heard it. I hear it, guys. Let's see, check our can. Not sure if the, maybe the relay is bad. Was priming.
Okay, we got spark there. A3M in the car and something tells me I just I don't trust the one that's in the car oh now the fuel pumps even priming oh, would you look at that Purring like a kitten. Bad PCM, guys. You can probably watch the uh, injector pulse now. So we should probably fix the obvious vacuum leak. Let me get something to cap that off. Oh. Now I can check my beer. All right guys, let's see if this thing will move. Check engine. <laughs> Ooh. She scoots too. So the owner said that this car it does, it actually moves, like for a stock motor, it actually, it's surprisingly really smooth, you know, sometimes you have those motors, now guys, the front control arm bushings are just vibrating all over the place, I'm wearing off the uh, old brake dust and rust off the rotors right now, but, um, you know, sometimes you feel like some motors are just so smooth through acceleration. This is one of those motors. Like it's just, it wants to go. Posi works. I had both tires laying, uh, laying some rubber down here. Not too bad. And here is the beast in all of its glory. So control arms, bushings all the way around need to be done. The wheel hop in the back of this thing was absolutely unreal. But what do you expect on a car with 279,000 miles 
and none of that stuff I bet you has ever been changed plus sitting since 2010 last time on the road so I'll let you guys be the judge of that so this DPS car could be yours one of 293 specific to Texas and it's solid rust free yes it needs the basics control arm bushings probably shocks struts uh, carrier bushings all the bushings guys all right I'd probably do some motor mounts but runs drives stops does burnouts does everything that it's supposed to do and can be yours for 8500 bucks if you are interested or know anybody who's in the whole SSP world of things great car clean blue Texas title ready to go ready to be yours bring a trailer till next time we'll see you back here on the infamous project